Before the age of recoilless rifles and shoulder-launched anti-tank rockets, all that the humble infantryman had on him to engage armored vehicle was a rifle on steroids. Anti-tank rifles were one of the first points on the evolution of infantry-based anti-armor systems and the Boy's anti-tank rifle is a famous example of one. Welcome to another Tank Encyclopedia Voiced article. I'm your host, Tony, and today, we'll be taking a look at the British-made Boy's anti-tank rifle. If you like what we do and want to see more, fire around into that subscribe button so you don't miss a single video. During World War I, the British Army had shown interest in an anti-tank rifle for use against early German tanks. Though development never went past the prototype stage, much later in 1934, another program was started by the Small Arms Committee for a platoon-level anti-tank rifle with the capability to penetrate 16mm for armor at 100 yards or 91 meter. Led by Captain Henry C. Boyce, the Assistant Superintendent of Design at the Royal Small Arms Factory, Enfield, the team used the Polish Karabin Sterczyk Panzerny Zor 35 anti-tank rifle as inspiration for their project and built a large-scale bolt-action rifle designed to take a modified .50 BMG cartridge, though the caliber was increased to .55 after initial trials. What set it apart from other anti-tank rifles of the time was that it was fed from a top-loading magazine, which spent cases ejected downwards from the rifle. Due to this, the sights were placed on the left side of the rifle. In order to reduce the effects of recoil, a circular muzzle brake with three slots was added. The entire barrel and receiver were mounted on a slide which pushed back onto a large spring when fired, and a walnut cheekpiece and a curved butt with padding allowed the user to better control the weapon. A unique T-shaped monopod also gave it a stable firing platform. The barrel was 910mm or 35.8 inches long with 7 grooves. Its projectiles could achieve a velocity of 802m per second and remain highly accurate up to a range of 300 yards or 274 meters. Early testing began in early 1936 on the prototype named Stanjon. The original 50 BMG cartridge was described as having a disappointing armor-piercing performance. This led Captain Boyce to redesign the cartridge, increasing the projectile to .55 caliber, then placing it in an enlarged 50 BMG case. This increased its penetration performance to 23.2 mm of armor at 100 yards, greatly surpassing the initial requirement. The stanchion was accepted for service in November 1937, but unfortunately, Captain Boyce died days later, and thus, the rifle was renamed Boyce in his honor. Over the course of its service, the rifle would receive a number of upgrades which would result in two additional variants on top of the original Mark I. One of the earliest modifications was made to the .55 Boyce cartridge when the Mark I bullet was deemed insufficient and a redesign ordered. The improved Mark II bullet, which was introduced into service in June 1939, had the weight of the bullet reduced and the propellant increased, leading to a lighter but faster bullet. In 1942, an armor-piercing composite rigid APCR bullet was developed after the examination of captured German 7.92x94mm Patronen cartridges. The design used a Tungsten carbide core with an aluminum jacket had an improved muscle velocity of 944 meter per second and could penetrate 20 mm of armor at 300 yards. The APCR cartridge was never officially adopted, however, due to the introduction of more effective anti-tank weapons such as the Piat. The first major set of modifications for the boys came after Canadian engineers at John Inglis and Company, a manufacturing firm contracted to produce the boys as well as other weapons for the Commonwealth war effort took it upon themselves to make a few changes. A new muzzle brake was designed known as the Harmonica, a rectangular block with rearward slanting gas vents directed horizontally on either side, theorized to have come about as a result of US testing on the Swiss Solothurn S18-1000. Apart from reducing recoil, it more importantly reduced the amount of debris thrown up by the rifle's blast, thus making it harder to spot in the field. Another advantage was that it did not require much maintenance unlike the original brake. Other modifications include the replacement of the original monopod with the brand gun bipod, the mounting of simpler fixed sights and the reinforcement of the butt padding with rubber. Designated the Mark I asterisk, 
the modified rifle was officially adopted in 1942, with new rifles being made to the specification and original marks upgraded. A lighter and shorter version of the Boys was developed in mid-1942 with the aim of giving airborne forces greater firepower. Using the Mark I Star as a base, the barrel was shortened to 762mm and the muzzle brake removed. So this had the effect of increasing its report and recoil while reducing its penetration. Numerous parts were made from aluminum to save on weight, so this made them softer and more prone to bending and breaking. There is conflicting evidence that it was also a squeeze bore rifle using a neck down .55 caliber case for a 303 caliber armor piercing bullet as a weight saving measure. This is countered by reports stating that the round was solely designed as a training device, allowing the boys to be used on standard 303 ranges. The project was cancelled in 1943 when the boys was declared obsolete, though a few models from the development were produced. In addition to the three official modifications of the boys discussed previously, two boys Mark I rifles were produced to chamber 13.2mm rounds. It has been suggested that they were part of an experiment to arm bombers with a defensive gun that could take on frontally armored German fighters, though this has been argued against due to the impracticality of single shot guns in aircraft defense. In the Lee Enveld story, a book by Ian Scannerton, there is mention of a smoothbore 13.2mm boys theorized to have been used to test a Sabo round in mid-1945. The Americans also modified the rifle, with one interesting version having come about during the US Army's sniping trials. Using the Canadian Mark I Star as a base, it was converted to fire .50 BMG. The barrel replaced with an M2 Browning barrel, and a telescopic sight was fitted. The rifle was reportedly to be extremely accurate to 1,000 yards or 914 meters and some were issued to combat units. By its declarations of obsolescence in 1943, about 114,000 of all marks had been produced. The Boys was baptized in fire during the 1939-1940 Winter War in Finnish surface. The dogged Finnish defense stalled the Soviet advance which afforded the Finns time to receive military aid with the United Kingdom donating 100 boys' rifles. It was extremely effective at penetrating the armor of Soviet tanks such as the PT-7 and T-26, with the Finns aiming at crew positions to make the best use out of the rifle. The Finns acquired another 100 boys' rifles from the British and 200 from the Germans from the stock of weapons captured during the Battle of France. With the official designation 14mm PST KIF-37 or Panzerin Toryunta Kifari, it was used throughout the Finnish forces until its replacement by the Lati L-39. The boys later became an ineffective anti-tank weapon due to the upgrades made to the Soviet tanks and it was relegated to coastal troops or even put away in storage, though they did find that it was effective at engaging hardpoints at long ranges. It would be kept on the official reserve list until 1956 when a vast majority were sold off to the US. In the hands of the British and Commonwealth forces, the boys would be adopted into service by the British Army in 1937, with over 58,000 of them in use over the course of World War II. During the opening campaigns of the war, such as Norway and France, the boys performed adequately against thinly armored tanks such as the Panzer I's, II's, and III's. It was, however, unpopular among the troops due to its 16 kilograms or 35 pounds weight and a frightful recoil. As anti-tank rifle rounds lack any explosive filler, they disable tanks through hits to critical components and thus, it could take multiple hits to disable a tank, a scenario which could demoralize troops. The evacuation of Dunkirk saw a large number of the rifles abandoned and in the reorganization of 1941, a single voice was issued to each section in a rifle platoon. They were also mounted on vehicles, with notable examples such as the Universal Carrier, which turned the vehicle into a primitive form of a tank destroyer, Humber Light Reconnaissance Car, and Rolls-Royce Armored Cars, among others. The boys next saw action in the deserts of North Africa, proving effective against Italian tanks, with the exception of the Fiat M13-40. The Germans would up-armor their panzers to combat Allied anti-tank capabilities, and after a study in the wake of Operation Crusader showed that no single boys had successfully engaged a tank. It was relegated to other roles such as engaging fortified positions with the Piat replacing it after the end of 1943, so it was still used in companies in the anti-material role. 
While the boy's relevancy was waning on the European front, it still could reliably engage Japanese tanks in the Far East due to the relatively thin armor on tanks such as the Type 95 Ha Go and Type 97 Chi Ha. Apart from its use in the British Army and Commonwealth forces, the boys also saw service in the inventories of a multitude of nations. Those that were captured by the Germans in the aftermath of the fall of France were redistributed to static and lower tier units under the designation 13.9mm Panzer Abwehrbüchse 782. The US received 771 boys Mark I star from Canada, which were issued to newly formed Ranger Battalions and US Marine Corps Raiders with extensive use in Marine Corps Special Operations in the Pacific. The Portuguese also bought some boys from Britain, though a vast majority were left in storage, with only a few sent to their possessions such as Macau. Despite the boys being seen as a more reliable and effective rifle when compared to the Soviet PTRD-41, the Soviets used a majority of their 3,200 boys rifles as a vehicle armament mounted on the Universal Carrier and used to engage soft-skinned vehicle and hardpoints. On top of this, they were used on fronts where tanks were less common as well as in training units. The Republic of China received 6,129 Mark I Star as part of Allied aid and were put to effective use in ambushes against Japanese armored columns, though they too disliked it due to its weight and preferred the American bazooka. Thus, some of the boys rifles sent over were never used on the front line, with some later falling into the hands of communist Chinese forces during the following Chinese civil war though it's unclear if they were used during the conflict. An unspecified number of boys rifles were supplied to the Philippines to aid in their resistance against Japanese occupation, used in a manner similar to ROC forces. After the war, they would be used during the Hukpalahap Rebellion and in the Korean War by Filipino forces. Even in the post-World War II era, the boys still saw action on a number of fronts. The US Army during the Korean War armed special sniper teams with boys that were converted in a similar manner to those used in the sniper trials discussed earlier in the video. An unspecified number were sold to Congolese rebels by Communist China during the 1964-1965 Congo Crisis. Those supplied to the Hellenic Army during World War II were reported to have still been in service during the Greek Civil War. An unknown number in service with Jewish insurgents and later Israeli forces, and even the Irish Republican Army were in possession of one, presumably from a number previously sold to Ireland during World War II. While the Boy Service Rifle was marked with a number of pitfalls such as a laborious weight equal to that of a Vickers machine gun, a ferocious recoil that from the complaints of British soldiers could bruise or even break shoulders, and an equally vicious noise that forced regulations to introduce mandatory ear protection in use, with proper training, the Boys proved to be an effective deterrent against slightly armored vehicles and when made obsolete by upgraded tank models, it was effectively employed in anti-fortification and long-range sniping roles, evidence of its versatility. This concludes our gander at the boy's anti-tank rifle. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already, and if you'd like to contribute more directly, you can join the ranks of our channel's members or make a donation on PayPal or Patreon. Until next time, keep us in your sights.